audio in on ATEM. Record button on ATEM. Yes. We ready to go? How are you going to cue the very downbeat of this rubato? Here it is. I'll, I'll count it in. Okay, are we, are we rolling, Steve? Yes. Everything in? Here it is, folks. Three, four. It's when the day's done in Bilbao People meet in the square Throwing dice in the plaza in Conversation Turning around from north to south, the old ones speak, the young ones shout by the rear. In the sweet summer When the day's done in Bilbao, it's the spirit in their eyes, in the faces of all the people, under the spell of Spanish skies, turning around from east to west, the family strolled the love to kiss the
everybody thanks for coming to our live stream episode three this is where we're doing music by pat metheny my name is peter sprague first we're going to do a set uh, that was our first tune but but we get, like to check in to make sure that our sound is okay so stephanie any word stephanie hi i'm here <laughs> any word from the from tripper and Guitar up one dB. Yes. Vocal down one dB. Right on. One dB, yeah. Yes. Okay. Right on. Let me do that. I'm mixing it in, at, at the same time playing. Mix master. And the guitar up a little bit. Okay. Your so. your vocal mic needs to come up. Peter. You sure you can't hear? Can you hear me now? No, no, it's somebody's commenting. Oh, the, the yeah. vocal mic needs to be louder. Yeah, just yours, yeah. You're the main guy, so you're the only one that needs to be heard, really. <laughs> How's that, everyone? Okay, so, Steve, I'm going to do, I'm going to move something here. Sorry, folks. Yes, I'm going to mute that, like that. Uh... Okay, so that first piece was called Song for Bilbao, written by Pat Metheny, lyrics by a good friend of ours named Randy Phillips. And she wrote the lyrics to a bunch of these songs. And Pat Metheny's songs, if you know, are very often the case not with lyrics. And in fact, Leonard, Leonard's a, a real historian of Metheny. And I think there's one song, isn't that right? One song, or just there's a, there's a couple of there's, songs. There's a few songs with lyrics. Um, mm -hmm. um, one from, um, uh, well, one, one from, I can't, like, my brain can't even think. It's, uh, well, it's okay. It's, there's, there's like three of them. And right. I, I've and sung it, each of them at one point in time. Of course, from his new album, there's From This Place. Yes. 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 And that's a killing tune. Yeah. yeah. Hey, well, um, we, so we're good on the sound. If you're having any problems with synchronization, Hi, Kendra. Um, if you're having any problems with synchronization, I think our sync on our side is okay. So we've had folks say if I they think just your voice needs to be louder still, Peter. Really? You're, yeah. Hmm. That's coming from Kendra Shank. Okay. All the way in New York. Wow, it's loud in loud in my my head. Um, or just be close to it. I, I don't know. Okay. Whatever you can do. Okay, so if you're having problems with synchronization, um, just stop and start YouTube, and it usually clears it up. So that's that. Let me tell you who's in the band. So you you heard Leonard talking. Meet Leonard Patton. Everyone clap. <laughs> um, Leonard and I have been playing together forever, and he's one of my favorite vocalists. He's a guy that uh, improvises, 
sings gospel, loves samba, loves Pat Metheny, so that's why he's on this gig. Leonard. Mm -hmm. And then, Leonard, you sent along a picture of you when you were um, young. Yeah. And tell the folks what the story on that picture so is. So that's me. That is, I believe, night, fall of 1986. Um, it was the beginning of my <laughs> senior year, because I graduated in 87. And that was me in the musical Grease oh. at Mira Mesa High School. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Good news. Yeah. Okay, so that's Leonard on, on keyboard, or actually just piano. This is John Offercook. John Offercook and I have known each other forever, uh, played a lot of great gigs. He's a big Lyle Mays fan and, and Matheny. Um, John, you, you sent a couple pictures. I always ask folks to send a couple pictures of when they were younger. And John has his ID from New England Conser Conservatory. <laughs> Tell him about that. When did you, you went there out right after high school? I take it. No, I, w I went to uh, I actually ended up go I went to Yale and I took a year off and went to NEC. A friend of mine who was at another college. We both basically played hooky for a year and went to NEC. And uh, yeah, so I was like 18 in that picture. Uh huh. And uh, hey, while you were in Boston, did you? get to hear Matheny at all? John? No, I'm thinking. No, I heard Mick Goodrick a bunch because yes. he, was, he was teaching at, at New England. But no, I don't think I heard Pat. Yeah. Then. I heard him at, in New Haven a bunch. In fact, my my little funny Pat Matheny story is that a buddy of mine, we heard him at, at the height of his, you know, uh, American Garage Band thing. And, okay. At Toad's Place in New Haven. So my friend, uh, who's another piano player, we, stood, we met him backstage and we both just stood there <laughs> like, Starstruck, you know, girl, you know, schoolgirls, like, and and, uh, and finally he just went, excuse me, and he walked away. Yeah. It was, it was totally embarrassing. Well, that's yeah. I love it. We all have Pat Metheny stories. We'll have some more of those. Um, that there's also a picture of you and your son Max. Tell right. them, tell them who Max is. Well, Max is a uh, very fine classical clarinetist, and uh, that's actually the last performance I did that anybody would have seen outside of my house. Mm -hmm. And we did a we, we he and I played a uh, Hindemith a movement of a Hindemith uh, clarinet sonata. And and now he's at the Coburn School, is that right? Although not really getting to attend because of the yeah. virus. Yeah, he's kind of on hold like else. But uh, yeah. yeah, he got in there and he's he's doing great. He's a hell of a player. Hey, great player. He's recorded here at the studio. John and him or did well. John, it was just him playing solo. It was just but, him. Yeah. That, that was yeah, keep pressing the button there, John, man. Oh, that, yeah, that was him uh, to get into Allstate. Okay, and, uh, and it worked. That's the merits of recording here it at works. Sprague That's right. Uh, <laughs> we put it. Guar <laughs> guaranteed acceptance anywhere. Juilliard. You want to go to Juilliard? Juilliard? Come here and record. <laughs> Love it. Um, and then we have Mac Layton on bass. Yeah. Um, Mac, you, you, didn't you say you had a story for us? Yeah, I have a little Pat Metheny story, I guess. Want me to tell it now? Yeah, it was about Unity Village. Yeah, so I'm, I pulled up the Wikipedia article on my phone here so I could reference it. Uh, there's So there's a place in Missouri called Unity Village, which is oh, really? the headquarters of the Unity Church. And Pat Metheny is from Missouri. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he's got a tune, I think it's on his first on his first record, Bright Size Life. It's called Unity Village. Um, and so a number of years ago, I was in Kansas City for the summer. And uh, a friend of mine, who is a friend of everybody here, Ed Kornhauser, a piano player, he came out to sort of visit and hang out. And the church that he works for here in San Diego, which is a Unity church, was in Kansas City to go to Unity Village um, at the same time, totally coincidentally. So we, we sort of, just on a lark, played their service that they had at Unity Village. And just to be really meta about the whole thing, we played the song <laughs> Unity Village at Unity Village. Oh, uh. <laughs> I bet that hasn't happened since. Hey, Peter, just have to chime in real quick. Yeah. That uh, Mac needs to be heard louder. So. Okay, so Mac, my, my suggestion maybe... If you're, I'm just looking at the comments and yeah. trying to help these people out. You know? Yeah, yeah. Mac, maybe you'll, you should just lean down and... I'll just crouch, crouch down into the microphone. There you go. Maybe Sorry. Uh, but oh, is. and we have... Okay, so next guy. We have Duncan Moore on drums. Yeah. And Duncan grew up in the Midwest, and there's a picture of him... And his sister, t tell him about that, Doc. Okay, well, yes, I did grow up in Des Moines, Iowa, and my mother was a 
an excellent singer. She had gone to Juilliard, and then she had, was offered a job singing on the radio, on WHO Radio in Des Moines. And that was her steady gig. And uh, every, every Christmas, she would have my sister and I sing Christmas carols on the radio. And so that picture is my sister and I. I'm the geeky guy there in the front of the picture. And uh, um, my mother in the background, you know, admiring us and being very proud of, of us. And yeah. So, so that, was, that show was actually called the Corn Belt Farm Hour. So you can't get any more Iowa than that. So that, that really proves that I'm truly a Midwesterner. So you've earned way more merit in being able to tr play Pat Metheny's music in the way that it should be played because you, <laughs> you're rooting the band with your, I, your Midwest roots. Midwest, right. Love yeah. it. Yeah, there's a lot of corn in my playing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's play some music. We're going to play a ballad uh, that uh, is very country and very folky uh, that Pat wrote called Travels. <laughs> Ever since I was a child, restless as a river, I'd want to run from everything I've known. Blue horizon, it was calling me to wonder, to travel far away. Travel far away from home With the turning of the trees Turning of the season Wild windblown leaves I'd wonder where they've flown Turn to follow It's my soul that wants to Travel far away from home Travel far away from home Inside my dreams I'm swept into a breeze That calls and carries me Out through a cloudless sky And where the rivers overflow
that I am grown Blue horizon It's calling me to wonder And travel far away from home 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 The restless rain Then oceans as in the sky A call to travel far away from Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. We're going to now move. Oh, Stephanie, anything you have for us? Yes, Chip mentioned to put the bass up a bit. A little more bass. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool, folks, if we had a mixer here? But with COVID the way it is, the mixing board is right to my right, and I'm doing, doing it. Um, and, yeah. and we have Tripp, my brother, he's out in the Netherlands somewhere, and he's, he's sort of mixing, mixing from, from distant shores. All right, we're going to keep on. He also says the sink is good, and Dr. B says your voice is great. Okay. Love that. Love that something is working. Okay. Something's working. So, you know, when I got out of high school, um, I went to Boston for a swelting, sweltering summer and just roasted like I've never roasted before. And the big talk around Boston at that moment, this was before Pat, at least I had ever heard of him, it was this young guy named Pat Metheny playing, playing incredible. And I got to hear him a couple of places. Uh, do you remember that place, um, John, it, in Boston? Was it still going when you were there? It was called Paul's Mall. Uh, or is that before your time? That might have been gone, yeah. yeah. That's where I heard him, and it was just this funky club, and, and it was him and Jocko, and Duncan, who would have been the drummer at that time? Bob Moses. Bob Moses. Probably Bob Moses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just, just incredible music. And one of the things that Matheny had, and in fact on that first record, which was called Bright Size Life, he recorded a Broadway blues by Ornette Coleman. So Matheny had sort of a connection with Ornette Coleman. And... Um, yeah. It seemed, uh, in a in a way, kind of unlikely, but they they made some great music, and and it 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 was an inspiration, and it kind of led me to listen a little bit more to Ornette when I hadn't listened as much to him. So we're gonna play a next uh, blues uh, that Ornette wrote called Blues Connotation, and it didn't have a lyric, and I wrote a lyric for it, and it's called Blues Connotation, and I just love this last line: Shun the old tradition, buck the dead horse free jazz and play the blues the way you want. <laughs> it's kind of sad to hear you talk about a dead horse, though. Well, I know. Yeah. Well, that's the way I was feeling at this. <laughs> All right. Just when you think it's safe to go out and belt the blues out. Ornette oh, came through and called it time out. 
There ain't no reason got to be that way. Break it up. The blues connotation, the old tradition, but the dead horse free jazz. Just when you think it's safe to sing 12 bars with your guitar. Long comes an alto saxophone star. Or Ned doesn't see it that way. Break it up. The blues connotation, the old tradition, buck the dead horse, free jazz, and play the blues the way you want. Just when you think it's safe to go out, they both blues out. Oh, that came through, call the time out. There ain't no reason got to be that way. Break it up. The blues kind of me. Shun the old tradition. Bug the dead horse. Free jazz. Just when you think it's safe to sing. Twelve bars with the guitar. Long comes an out the saxophone star. Don't let us see it that way. Break it up. The blues kind of me. Shun the old tradition. Bug the dead horse. Free jazz. to play the blues the way you want.
there ain't no reason it gotta be that way. Break it up, the blues kind of thing. Shut the old bitch up and bother that us. Read your just when you think that thing go bump us with the kid in the Long calls and out, that's the home stop. Hey folks, we have a virtual tip jar brewing out there in the nether, nether field. And um, we have been so thankful for all of you that have tipped because it's sort of supporting our, our cause over here at Sprague making music in a time when you can't make music. So thank you so much. And we found, one thing we found out is that if you go, you can tip for Venmo, and you can tip also for PayPal. And if you do the PayPal one, one, select friends and family, because we are friends, and we also save 3.5%, according to our accountant, Tripper Sprague. <laughs> Tripper Sprague. And at the end of the whole show, we're going to leave the slide up with the PayPal and Venmo information. Uh, back in 1987, I was cooking on my music, and I get this postcard in the mail, and it's this wacky-looking guitar and this note, and it was so weird. I didn't know who wrote the note, and I, I mean, I got some fan mail, I guess, and this guy said, hey, man, heard you on the radio. You sounded good. Keep playing. Keep it going, and it took me a long time to figure out, finally, I looked at the fine print in the back, you know, because it was a... Uh, postcard with a picture of this fancy guitar on the front and in the back it had small print in the uh, uh, that, that it was Pat Metheny's guitar so that was so cool uh, getting that in the mail and it, I had to sort of let him know way after the fact because I didn't know at the time there's a there's a picture, Steve Show, the next picture of Pat and the band. He had a band with Lyle Mays and, let's see, Danny Egan. Am I right there, Dunk? Mark Egan. And then Danny Gottlieb playing. Yeah, Danny Gottlieb. Okay, so that was a quartet that, that Pat had, and, and I got to hear them a bunch of times. And at the point, at that, point that they were doing that, I guess Lyle's father owned a, I'm told, owned a uh, car, selling cars, and they just got a van and basically went from coast to coast nonstop for two years playing gigs, building a, an audience for, building an underground audience, at a, and that was kind of a new thing. It was a new thing for jazz guys, rock guys were doing that. Hey, we're going to do one of our favorite ballads, it's called Change of Heart, the lyrics on this are, are by our friend Randy Phillips and um, just a gorgeous tune. the darkening light wild geese in a distant sky calling out their long 
northern flight Looking up from fields of grass Chilled by the breath of the wind Thinking nothing seems to last Just as the sun slips out of sight As if erased in the grace of forgiveness Part of the heart dissolving in the falling mist Gone into the blue All that passes through Rising moon will shed her shadow soon to show her face among the stars. So it is with us till we return to dust. Listen to the quiet hush between drops of rain inside a chain. the darkening light wild geese in a distant sky calling out their long northern flight 
looking up from fields of grass Turned by the darkening wind, yeah Thinking nothing seems to last Just as the sun slips out of sight As if be raised in the grace of forgiveness the heart dissolving in the falling mist Gone into the blue All that passes through Rising moon will shed her shadow Soon to show her face among the stars So it is with us Till we return to Yes. I just wanna... That's my wife Stephanie, by the way. We got a whole crew and going, and she's hand, wa got a watching, team of people. watching the chat going on. What's up, Steph? Yeah, I just wanted to relay to the musicians here because you know they don't get any claps and the feedback, <laughs> but there is over 200, almost 200 people Love it. tuning in, and they're just loving it, getting goosebumps. Fantastic, amazing. Um, so. Anyway. Thank you. That feels good because yeah. it's a little funny being here. It's absolutely fun. And we've, we've been preparing all week and we're having a ball. And we had, you know, time together to talk, even though we're kind of separated. Um, but man, it, it's so fun. But it is a bit, bit weird if we finish this tune and Leonard was killing it on that last tune. And, uh, well, we're just, we don't get any applause back but we just did <laughs> oh man oh, okay that's awesome that's awesome yeah, all right we have people from all over the world listening in <laughs> aside of course from our wonderful local audience as well hey. as robert bush we all love your Aww. reviews good Thanks for robert for bush in. yeah from the reader but yeah, Iowa, New Jersey, New Zealand, Mexico, Venezuela. Love it. Super cool. Hey, did um, anyone want to ask about the blue tape? <laughs> no, but they they like everybody's spectacles. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, the glasses. Yeah, yes. Andy, John, Duncan, yeah. they all like that. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, blind crew. Yeah, the blind mm -hmm. crew. Well, should we keep, we have yeah. a couple more for you guys. Um, the. Um, this is, next one's kind of got a little story. Uh, yeah. Basically, I, I knew we were going to do this concert, and I thought, wouldn't it be cool to reach out to Pat? So I sent him a note and said, hey, we're doing this concert. Um, we'd love you to be part of it in some manner. And um, he said, well, I, I have been, you know, I had some idea of him recording a solo, and we would fly it in somehow. But... Um, he said, no, I haven't been playing much. I've been composing mostly. So he says, I have an idea for you. I'm going to read what he wrote. He said, basically, I wake up every morning and write a tune, mostly knowing that my batting average basically follows that of an average Padres. It's funny that he picked Padres because he, yeah. he knew that 
If, I mean, he could have. He knew low that, blow, actually. Well, well he <laughs> knows that we live in San Diego and that some of us, in fact, Leonard is a big Padres fan. But he said that his average of writing songs is basically that of a, a Padres beach outfielder around 217 or so. So I figure, so this is Pat saying, so I figure if I write a lot of stuff, I can maybe, I can get maybe two out of ten that I will feel good about that will be able to survive getting pounded on every night for 150 nights in a row or so. He's talking about a tune that you can keep playing and new stuff keeps happening and it's fresh and, and doesn't get, doesn't dwindle. Um, but he says, but, but honestly, I never know which two ones will, um, which, which ones will make it. Nor does that mean that the other eight bet tunes were bad, just that I don't think that they have that robust, robust thing that I, I look for. And then he says, you guys know this song, uh, Around Midnight, he says, that's the most robust song that he knows. It cannot be denied. Someone, anyone plays the melody. Someone else plays more or less the right bass notes with it. <laughs> Monk is in the room, everyone sounds great, and an infinity ensues. So what Pat did was he, he sent uh, two songs that he just wrote. He, he says he keeps them in a big pile, and he just picked two out and sent it to us and said, play it and, and see, see what, if it can work in the concert. So we, we have, they were both great tunes, but I, we had to just pick one. Um, and it's called Matheny 6-4. Six, 6-4 four. Six, four is the, the time signature that it's in. And we love it. It's a beautiful song, and you might, you're hearing it here first, world debut. It may be that after he, no, not after he hears it, he'll, he'll figure it, he'll, he'll hear it, I hope. I'll send it to him. And, um, but maybe someday you'll hear it, his version, and it'll go huge, and it'll take over the world, and you, you can, we can say it started here first. So this is Matheny 6-4. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Okay, everyone good? Okay, one bar of six. Yeah. <laughs>
Nice guys. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't have to switch guitars. Good. Switch guitars. Hey, let's keep it moving. We're gonna we're gonna just tune in. Stephanie, everything okay over on that front? Stephanie? Yes. Everything's <laughs> great. <laughs> Took me a minute to turn the mic on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Trip says the mic, the mix is still great, but all the comments on this song are just like. It's a good song. Oh, yeah. Like, it. Fantastic. Duncan is awesome, absolutely, bravo. Did Pat Super write nice. in? nice, bravo, yeah. sweet indeed. <laughs> applause, applause, on and on, on and on. No, I haven't heard. We'll get it to him. That is yeah. a good tune, yeah, man. Beautiful. Man, I love it. I'm honored that we got to play it. Um, let me tell you a, a couple quick things. We are over here at Sprague That's the name of my studio. Um, we are staying safe. We're all in different rooms. I'm in the control room next a little ways over there, that way, is um, Stephanie, and she's a little bit of a distance from Steve, who's working the board. And Steve, show them some of the pictures of the studio today, how it's all co cooking. And, and then farther down the way, further north of me is where Duncan is. He's in the big room. And then from him over that way, a little more, more east, is Leonard, and he's in the small room. And then we have a grand piano sitting in the room that John's in. So we're holding tight with that. Um, the studio, there's a, a few before and after pictures. 
the, it's come quite a, quite a ways. We bought this house knowing that we wanted to do a studio, but it was a funky wooden floor, no foundation, um, two-car garage, and we pretty much gutted it and added cement in the bottom and a whole other uh, kind of addition to it. So, um, and Steve, can you show them the picture mm -hmm. of the outside of the, the building as it is new? Anyway, we love this place. Uh, we have a, a couple more songs for you. The next one is called Lee's Summit, and Lee's Summit is a town in Missouri, and it's the town where Pat Metheny grew up. Um, there's a picture of downtown. It's quaint. It looks pretty. And then Pat went to, uh, I think, um, Leeds Summit High School, which is your basic building. In fact, I, I'm told that he didn't really do much except practice when he was in school, so he barely made it out of school. And then he got, this is a good story. He, the, the dean from University of Miami, his name is Bill Lee, he offered a scholarship to Pat. Pat, after a less than a week at college, he says, Matheny realized that playing guitar all day during his teens had left him unprepared for classes. So he, he, admit, he admitted this to Lee, the guy that got him the gig, and then Lee offered him instead a job, and instead of being a student, he said, do you want to be a teacher instead? I love that. Guy just took it over. And then so, the following year, he was, he was teaching at Berkeley. I know. <laughs> Skyrocketed. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant guy, really sweet guy too. Really, really special. So I wrote a song that is kind of folky and I've never been to Lee's Summit, but this is what it sounds like to me. This is called, this is one of mine called Lee's Summit. One, two, two, one, two, three, two.
Thank you. That was Lee's Summit. We are going to play one big last tune, and if you make enough noise, we'll do an encore. How's that? <laughs> so this is a piece called Lone Jack. This is one of Pat's tunes that Randy, our friend, wrote a lyric to it. And she, her angle was, Lone Jack was a Vietnam vet trying to navigate his life after the return from an insane war. And she says, cats who knew him back when said he's never been the same since he got back from Nam. In the maze of his bent mind, life is good and life loves Lone Jack. Check it out. Okay, Dunk, you got it. He's never been the same since he got back from Nam In the maze of his bad mind Life is good and life loves Lone Jack In the bus stop street side where he salvages a treasure trove of stuff out smokes half a sandwich heaven says life is good and life loves lone jack punching shadows out on the city streets he falls follows little talks to no one nobody else sees but he lone jack all the suit But he's not the one in prison by the nine to five. The divine spark will provide. Life is good and life loves Lone Jack. Got back from them in the maze of spent mind. Life's good and life loves Lone Jack in the bus stop street sign where he salvages treasure trove of stuffed out smokes, half a sandwich. Heaven sent life's good and life loves Lone Jack, punching shadows out on the city streets. He falls. Follows wind and wind talks to no one, nobody else sees but him. Lone Jack, all the suits shake their heads, but he's not the one prison by the nine to five. The divine spark will provide life's good life. Love's Lone
He got back from them in the maze of his bad mind. Life is gonna lie. Love's going back in the bus stop street sign where he salvages treasure trove and stuffed out smokes at the sandwich. Heaven said, Life's gonna lie. Love's lone jack, punching shadows out on the city streets. He falls. Follows led to the wind tossing no one nobody else sees but him Long Jack all the suit shake their heads But he's not the one prison by the night to five the divine spark will provide life 
life's gonna fly. Is there a, does it warrant a, doing a, a, um, does it warrant doing a, an encore short little mini piece? Robert Bush well, asked for one. Yes, okay. Me, I say yes. Okay. But of course, everyone, there's so many people on here that uh, wants an encore, clapping, clapping, yay, encore. Okay, encore. This, this is for Jeff Gotch. He's a, an old pal of mine. He lives up in, uh, near Santa Rosa. And he's a big Matheny fan, and he said, Peter, you got to play Last Train Home. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll just give a little moment of that. Um, one of the great tunes ever. Yeah, I love this. OK, Duncan, why don't you give it to us, man? Here it comes.
That's the show for tonight, ladies and gents. Thank you so much for being with us. Again, on behalf of the whole band, that's Leonard singing, John Offercook playing the piano, Mackenzie Layton playing the bass, Duncan Moore on the drums. My name is Peter Sprague. Thanks here in the studio, my wife Stephanie handling the chat and chatmeister. Steve Grant, he's our guy that's doing all the switching, so you're getting all the angles and making sure it's good. Uh, let's see, again, the tip jar is happening, and, it, and we're going to leave it up in case you want to get that information. But thank you so much for doing that. Um, next week, uh, I've got a an, an concert we call the Tribute, the Tribute Rebels, featuring me and my brother Trip Mac. <laughs> you never heard of that man. The Tribute Rebels. We do our own music. We don't do tributes to other bands. Danny Green is going to play piano. The, the theme of the night is called Songs from the Virus Vacuum. <laughs> Dig that. It'll be fun. Um, yeah. Also next week, um, I, and I will mention it in my gig email, uh, that I'm going to do a Q&A with uh, my, my people at Open Studio. That, that's the company that I do my online videos, and I'm going to do a, a Q&A. I'll mention that to, if you want to tune in. You can't believe how hot it is in here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on now, somebody. What it is is we can't run the air conditioning while we're playing because it makes so much noise. Yeah. Um, it's been fantastic. We'll see you in the next time. Thanks so much for tuning in. Oh, and next week, yes, come and hang with us on Thursday. That's it.